Good morning, Bitcoin. My name is Thomas Hunt, and this is Proof of Work. Proof of Work is a show about the people behind Bitcoin, what they do, and how they got here. Today's guest is Alejandro Del Torre. Welcome, Alejandro. How's it going? Going well. Thanks, Thomas. How are you? Doing great. Uh, just getting these interviews done from my incredible penthouse apartment here in New York City. It's a fabulous view of the Chrysler building. But uh, wow. I think we're just going to go ahead and start off with everyone's most favorite and familiar question. What was your first computer? It's a great question. Um, it's one of my favorite topics to talk about, actually. I had an e-machines um, and um, it was it was extremely basic, right? Uh, we got we had AOL um, that was also extremely basic. Um, but I, that's when I really started getting into computers. I um, my friend burned me uh, Quake Three Arena and and uh, set it up on my computer, and I was hooked. That was the first online game I had ever played. And after after Quake Three Arena was basically my gateway into computers and into to where I am now. Um, since I wanted to improve my frame rate in Quake Three Arena online, I started looking into ways to improve my um, uh, you know started looking into hardware, RAM, up, upgrading my RAM, uh, upgrading my hard drive, uh, graphics card. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, so that's what I did. And I remember I used to get on AOL and then I would kill the AOL program because it would give me just that little bit more of kilobytes per, uh, per second, uh, connection. And yeah, that was, uh, that was my first machine. <laughs> I, I remember e-machines. They were, uh, yeah. it was incredible how low they could get incredible. the prices on those clones because they were just turning out hundreds and thousands, probably millions. I don't know, but lots and lots of these very basic computers. Some of them, I think they, they might've been the company that had that sticker where it will never expire. It'll never go back. Yeah. That was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that thing, but I did, I, I did, I did upgrade it. So, but there was uh, the motherboards were so bad. Uh, yeah. yeah, so there was a, but I was able to improve the frame rate in my online gaming and, you know, frag all night. So I was happy. I'm impressed you were able to get in there and uh, take the parts in and out. Uh, we used to do that way back in the day. And one of the things we used to do is you'd have a different boot up configuration, uh, depending on how you wanted the memory to be, if you wanted more extended memory or more, uh, they would do kind of like a fake memory where it would put a page file on the hard drive and it would use that hard drive as extended memory, things like that. And it was all about games. It was all about like, I needed to shift the way that the computer runs so I could play my game, so I could play my game better and faster it's very similar yeah to experience. yeah yeah well that was that was the that was that was the beginning of my uh foray into hardware now i'm into machine uh, mining rig hardware so, so, so those, where uh, did it go from there did you keep playing quake did you learn computer programming did you keep using computers in college or yeah 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 so i um i got i really really got into quake 3 uh i i kind of even I, in those days, there was no such thing as professional, but I was in a very good clan. Um, I was top, top, like 25 clan in the world, whatever. So we were, you know, I was really, really serious about it. I was like 13 or something. Um, uh, and then I um, set up, I set up Quake 3 in the, um, in the, uh, um, in, the in our school, in the uh, local area, the land folder of the whole entire school. So everyone could could actually play Quake Three Arena if they if they were able to get into the school land folders. So we would have we would have some serious matches across, you know, all my classrooms, all my friends. We would play like whatever the teacher was looking. We would set up Quake Three and we would play. <laughs> so and, uh, yeah, we did the same thing, but just a few years earlier, we had like Half Life or. Uh, Warcraft 2 and Starcraft, the real-time shooter or real-time strategy games. And uh, we would come back to the computer labs at night. Uh, we were in college at the time and uh, or we would just play all night. It was just the whole computer lab be transformed over. We'd have a different image. We'd re-image all the computers. And yeah, uh, yeah it was just 
all and again all of this we learned to play games like we were yeah how to same here computers how to reformat them how to install windows how to make them like you said turning off the aol program anything we could do to make the game faster and better it's it's surprising looking back how many people share this uh computers through games idea it's in i think i think yeah almost almost everyone almost everyone and then i then i, I continue to get into uh, uh i i kind of stick to hardware um because um uh, unlike uh, some of my good develop developer friends uh that i like to stay indoors all day i actually like to go outdoors and so I thought um, <laughs> I thought maybe computer programming wasn't the right thing for me. So I stick more to hardware. Um, I got into I was into servers. I got I did a lot of I did, I did a lot of uh, C boxes torrenting, which actually that's one of the reasons why Bitcoin was so familiar to me because I knew a lot about peer to peer technology when I found out about Bitcoin uh, because I was yeah because I was doing legal CD. <laughs> That's that's so yeah, so yeah, I felt as well, but I don't know that I'd go so far with the legal seating. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Bram Bram Cohen's technology of BitTorrent, yeah. the ability to take a file, break it up into pieces, send those pieces across, and then somehow reassemble it. Uh, it was just amazing. I remember the first time because we had Napster and Nutella and FTP sites and things like oh, that before. Yeah. But then when BitTorrent came out, even though there was nothing you could torrent for a while, like you're saying, you could torrent Linux downloads and manuals and uh, uninteresting, uninteresting stuff. But pretty soon, uh, other torrents came along. But yeah, I agree. It was a good yeah. introduction to Bit to Bitcoin. Yeah, good introduction to peer to peer technology. It was fascinating that you know no one could stop it. You know, there's no way you can stop peer to peer technology. So uh, I saw I saw the. One of the, that's one of the reasons why I got into Bitcoin so heavily. I saw the, I saw how the peer-to-peer -peer aspect of Bitcoin was unstoppable. So, because I already had, I already knew it, and you knew how it worked. So, thank, well, thankfully, you, it, you know, get into Bitcoin early. Did it come out and then uh, pass you by? I know a lot of people, and myself, saw yeah. it come out and then forgot about it for three years or something like that. Just yeah, happens, you know. Yeah, same. Uh, yeah, I I saw it. I think in 2011. I was actually I, I I remember it because it was my brother and I, um, we stumbled up, up, uh, on it. I'm not too sure how, but I, I, we remember we I remember we still speak about this how we both like looked into it and thought, nah, this is a scam. There's no way, but it's no way this works. What is this? It sounds like a scam. Forget it. Three years later or two years later, I was. That's it. That's it. That was that was it. That was the end. I never looked back. Well, in a lot of ways, that's the way that you prove it's not a scam is we all say it's a scam, and then we spend three years waiting to read the article, Bitcoin <laughs> finally revealed a scam, everyone loses all their money, and that article keeps not coming out. And you're like, why is that article not coming out? And you go maybe read more, and you watch some more videos, and you see some Andreas videos. And uh, for me, yeah. when I got back to Bitcoin in 2013, uh, Coinbase and BitPay had shown up and they were real companies and they were helping people really use, you know, this goofy command line currency I'd seen years ago. And, and I was like, whoa, you know, this could be a thing. Like these, these companies look really legit. They're doing, you know, business here. Yeah. Same here. I, I saw, I, I saw Coinbase, likewise, saw Coinbase, uh, big, uh, all these, all these new, they were so new. They were, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about you could see you could find these guys in conferences that were like ten employees. That's how new they were. Um, but in I, for me, you know, um, I've always been into computers and you know networking and whatnot. But I'm also I'm also into business, also into a capitalist. So I thought I looked at the uh, I saw how amazing this technology was, what it stood for for freedom of you know financial freedom for humanity. And I saw the opportunity that there was basically no companies around it. So I just jumped in and um, never looked back. Thankfully, good, good, good choice. I quit school even. For well, that's, that's really the thing. At that time, no one could say, you know, oh, you're supposed to make a wallet or you're supposed to make a podcast or you're supposed to make a shopping website. You there had was nothing. to step up and do it yourself. And it was completely yeah. open. Like, I mean, I started making yeah. mad Bitcoins and there was Let's Talk Bitcoin and that was it. We were the two kind of podcast YouTube people in the game. And, uh, you know, you had to be crazy to do it at that time, to commit all of your energy and your resources to it, uh, professionally or personally. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to be a real believer. I think uh, 
I think you have to really believe in it. Um, and I think uh, I think you and I really believe in it. So where'd you go from there? Did you start a company? What what happened next? Sure. So so um, yeah, I started a handful of companies. Some of them were success. Some of them were less successful than the others. Um, but one of them was pretty successful. I was actually I was actually using the technology um, behind the API behind Blocktrail. Blocktrail was this. Uh, was a um, uh, API and blockchain explorer uh, and then a wallet. Um, but yeah, they came, they acquired my small little startup. I had this like uh, Bitcoin wallet um, startup. It was just starting. They came and acquired me and and, and the tech, uh, which then turned into the wallet at Blocktrail. We worked on that for a couple of years. Then Bitmain came along, Jihan came um, and acquired Blocktrail from from us, uh, we joined the team. We then, um, um, uh, in Bitmain, we started BTC.com. So uh, yeah, co-founder along the, alongside Blockchain guys and alongside another team from China, which was the same team. Work, I worked on that for a couple of years, built it out to be the, the number one mining pool in the world, a uh, very successful wallet as well. Um, then I left uh, with the rest of the uh, executive team from BTCR Comp to start pooling. Um, well, I joined a bit later, but the, they they have started it. Um, and we're now the second largest Bitcoin mining pool in the world. And we also have a wallet. So um, yeah, it's been okay. It's been, a, it's been a fun ride. And just uh, for the normal people, what does a Bitcoin mining pool do? Okay. Um, well, so in order for you to, a miner is, um, is, is a computer. Um, a very advanced computer uh, that does one thing, one thing well, it's uh, mine Bitcoin in this, this case. Uh, but nowadays, in order for you to actually earn some Bitcoin from the activity of mining, you need to join a pool. Um, the miners, uh, aside from earning Bitcoin, also confirm transactions. Um, and um, there's no way, this, it's everyone's competing against everyone. So you have to join a pool in order for you to actually make some money. That makes sense. So if I mined all by myself, I, I wouldn't get anything at all. But if I mine no. the pool, they add up all of our computer power and sometimes our pool wins a block. Yes, that's exactly how it works. So let's say if you have 10% of, of the mining power in our pool, then you get 10% of the profit of the block. And and it's basically the only way you can mine nowadays. You can't mine by yourself unless you're some extremely massive uh, mining farm, which there are, there's there's only maybe a handful of these solo miners nowadays. It used to be a fun story, but now it's gotten a little sad. But back in the day, we managed to mine a whole block of Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Dogecoin. Dogecoin is uh, Dogecoin is actually quite uh interesting because it's actually merged mine with bitcoin so there's dogecoin is actually piggybacking on bitcoin's security um proof of work which it, it's on it's coin though right it's on litecoin what i think dogecoin's on litecoin oh yeah it's right it's a script my bad right yes yeah, the script right yeah you're right so it's all it's piggybacking on litecoin's um uh, security. Which one's on Bitcoin? It's uh, Namecoin. Namecoin's still around, believe it or not. That's, you know that, you know, fun, next fun fact. Pumped. It's probably getting pumped next. Namecoin, Feathercoin, all the things we used to have, yeah. Damn, Feathercoin. Um, you know, fun fact, Namecoin was the only other coin where Satoshi Nakamoto actually gave some input on It seemed like a really cool idea. I thought Namecoin was going to take off. There was stupid times where i held it at five dollars and thought it would go to 10 and all kinds of things they're just all these uh coins from back in the day people don't understand how many dead coins there are around us they're like my coin will last forever and it's like what about mega coin like, i never heard mega of coin. What about terra coin i never heard of terra coin what about prime coin remember quantum or Terra-coin. whatever one quark 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 was a big quark Plugged, uh, Matt's, Quark was Max a big Thompson one. I, Quark was a big future of things for like a weekend, and then it didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never really knew what Quark did at the end. I never it did nothing. 
I think he was a bartender at Deep Space Nine on Star Trek. I don't think he did anything else. <laughs> oh, those were good. Those were fun days. Those yeah, were fun it's, days. it's been crazy. So it's uh, pretty exciting the way you went from your first computer working on Quake 3 uh, to working at uh, Bitmain and then now working at Poolin. Uh, it's it's yeah. been good for you, right? Being on the computer, you'd suggest it to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I um, I always had, I always had a sort of civil war in my house against my parents because my parents did not want me to sit in front of computers for so long. And I will always tell them, "No, mom, dad, look, this is what's going to pay for my uh, future career. This is what I'm going to be doing." And now they're now they're uh, they're like, "Yeah, we always told you to stay on the computer." <laughs> It's funny the back and forth there because I know I used to play video games too and I was told not to. And then the, yeah. the big thing in my house for a long time was with the modems because I would need to be on the modem uh, all the time yeah. and somebody would pick up the phone and it goes beep, 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 beep. And you can hear them talking from the modem. Well, and then you get the mad. Computer. Then you're like, because your yeah. downloads stop and your things canceled. And uh, it yeah. used to be. Or you're, game, you're gaming and boom, all of a sudden. Boom. Uh, like, uh, you're, you're killed. Different. And you'd use your, yeah, your ranking on the ladder and everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those days there was no rankings or anything. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Fun times. Oh, it was good times. And um, thanks so much, Alejandro, for talking about your first computer. It was really cool to thank you, Thomas. People, so thanks, thanks. No worries. Thank you. So thank thank you. <laughs> so subscribe and like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bye bye.